Okay, so Madeline is going to talk to Prince Callum about what is going on. Or you get to choose between Callum or the their mother, the queen. Yeah, breathing. Breathing is really hard. Ooh. You ring for service, sir? What is it now? I didn't call for room service. Okay, he recognized her, so I think other people would recognize her too. You, the girl who's always holding something invisible. <laughs> She's like how when I go to the vet, the vet hates my cat. So <laughs> they, they like muzzle her and like hold her really roughly, and wrap her in blankets. So Dolores kind of looks like a vet trying to maneuver my cat. She's been assigned as my valet. It weren't my idea. <laughs> you were ridiculous enough as Paige. This is an insult to proper companions everywhere. What's with the get up? I'm in disguise. I feel like most of this visual novel is like, do you know? No, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about what we don't know for the next ten minutes. He is very pretty. She's not. Indeed. What I was told is that this woman is owed a debt of some nature. Her crime must be forgiven. Yeah, this is the type of visual novel where you kind of have to follow different routes to get the whole story. You're not going to get the full story from just one route. I don't know! Look, I'm sorry you got locked up, but you're obviously okay now, so you've got no call to have a go at me. I'm okay, I'm a wanted criminal. Yes, but you're not a dead criminal, at least. You are we? I don't know what that's I don't know what that means. If she's your servant now, can you send her away? That would be nice. I get kinda creepy. <laughs> I don't trust her out of my sight. I assume she was someone's minion. Now oh, she's less annoying than a minion at least. Keeping her alive means she keeps her master's secrets? I don't have a secret master. No one's <laughs> no one's asking you. We just want to loudly talk about you in front of your face. She told me she was plucked from an orphanage as a good well jester by the good jest I I can't say the word jester. It always ends up sounding like I'm saying like jester the clown the clown. Blech. Gesture. Gesture. Jester? Gesture. Now, have you received a promotion and a position that you were no way entitled to? Do they just really like to burn on poor Dolores here? I'm glad I'm not dead, but I'm not glad I'm here either. You <laughs> can put that on a t-shirt. I'm glad I'm not dead, but I'm not glad I'm here either. I was hoping you... We have to get to Princess Cassidy. Well, it looks like they have stopped her for now. She freed me, but her plan only made everyone more paranoid, and they've locked her up tighter than ever. I'm afraid I can't argue with my parents' actions this time. There was an assassin who... I've, like, I've played through several parts, and I can't remember who the assassin was or who they worked for. If they have discovered anything, no one has informed me. That doesn't make you furious. I have a... Okay, if I'm talky talky talky. Bring Gaston back. This is supposed to be Gaston's route, and there's not enough Gaston. As Cassidy said, she is the heir. Everything depends on her. If she makes a choice in the end, they have to accept it. So that's that. Callum can't help me now. Talking to him was pointless. Yay, Gaston's back! Mathilda! 
Oh, yeah, I don't know. How goes your errand? Not as productively as I might have hoped, my lord. No. Yes, Monsieur. Instead of finding answers to my questions, I have found new uncertainties. There is a chance that our actions are putting Cassidy in more danger rather than less. Monsieur, does it concern you that we are acting against the attempts of her family to keep her safe? Is it right to continue on this course if we are endangering the very person we are trying to serve? A man does not show us for <laughs> keeping her in a cage. Have they really ever even had a conversation or has he just like written her letters after letter? You, you, thank you, <laughs> you bear. I know her. The soul of a true hero recognizes its destiny. He is mad, but at least he is consistently mad. What have you discovered in your course, Monsieur? I've killed several slimes. Up to level four now. Oh, poor Oh, who cares about Oscar? Oscar's the childhood friend route. No, I don't care about Oscar. I will continue to search. I'll be waiting in your rooms. My coilet will see to your needs. Nice. <laughs> I just... No one makes innuendos like Gaston. He's a champ at this. Not like the last one. A cruel woman who trifled with the young maid's heart and crushed her spirit. A what? Countess Violi? Viol, viol, one of those who enjoys only the first taste of a dessert. My poor Coilette. Who is talking now? Ugh. My poor Coilette believed herself in love, even requesting leave of her responsibilities to follow her hearts. Only to discover that the heartless crown had left without her. A countess. Surely you know that my dear Coilette loves only women. <gasps> Except for myself, of course, but that is no fault of hers. My charms are too much for any to resist. Even lesbians love me. Sophiste? Is that f French? I don't have my cell phone, and I can't do the... Uh, Sophiste. Sophist. Sophiste? Now I must continue my quest until later, my dove. Why didn't she tell me? Well, I mean, when you're talking to a person and getting to know them, se your sexuality doesn't come up all the time. <gasps> you got cheese! Ah, but no meat. And of course, Coilet does not care for meat. You should have asked me first. What? If you do not... Oh, rose water? I feel like that would taste gross. Not, you should have told me about you! Oh yeah, this is the part where Madeline's kind of a bitch. You shared a bit. Oh no! What those cards- Okay, so you don't care that like naked dude saw you, but you're angry? That would be like assuming every lesbian is just into every woman. That's dumb. You might not be Coilet's, uh, you know, type. It wasn't your idea, I was just surprised. I don't have much experience with women. That did not come out quite as I intended. I don't have any close friends who are women. I've never had a chance for normal female under- <laughs> Madeline sounds like a robot sometimes. And I was. I thought we were getting to know each other, and so I was confused. Confused to find out I'm super gay. Telling me- Telling her that she- ah. Oh. Normal? What's normal supposed to be, a bitch? There have been men and women who love their own kind for as long as- Yes! And why would I? Since reaching adulthood, the focus of my life has been on preparing my prince for marriage. She doesn't even know what her own type is. At least Madeline apologizes. Aww, you toilet. You make her sad. Why do you make the cutest character in the game sad? Oh, she wanted to eat with you, but now she's saying she doesn't. Just screw you, you 
Poilette is the true heroine in this game. As it, my skin prickles with the sensation of being watched. Thankfully, before the atmosphere can grow any more tense, the room is brightened by the addition of a large amount of sparkle. <laughs> he is the sparkle man. There's the sparkles. You <laughs> apparently sparkle man can't read a room. Have you discovered anything new in your searches, Mister? The sparkles, they gone. Alas, no, nothing of which I could be certain. Ah, oh, well, we can't be certain of anything in this game. Yes, of course, my beloved will command our hearts. And for that I must look my best when we meet again. Coilette? Yes, monsieur, right away. Right away what? My best clothing requires special adjustments. Requiring <laughs> requires them to be sewn into him. Yeah, Coilette's a better person than you. She took better care of her prince compared to you. Ha. Huh? Ah, there we are, an appearance fit for the eyes of a princess. Indeed, monsieur. You are a feast for the eyes, monsieur. And now I must make myself available to serve my beloved's most clandestine needs. I... His lines are the best. Monsieur, if... If you are involved in tonight's festivities, you should have the opportunity to speak privately with Oscar. Could you let him know that I'm alright discreetly? C do you think that guy can do anything discreetly? You are a considered companion, of course. Thank you, monsieur. Have patience, my lovely maids, and favorable fortune as yet. Uh, I was wondering, the gay sex? You cannot sew. I think most people who at least have made an attempt can kind of sew basically, but probably can't do it with any kind of, like, talent. What do you do? Climb buildings, sneak around, eavesdrop, spread rumors, check... <laughs> she gambles? When does she gamble? My duties are mostly to promote... What does gambling have to do with helping Oscar? Can't breathe out of my nose. If someone plots against me, it's hard to talk when I can breathe only out of one hole in my head. And if nothing else will do to take the blow for him, you are supposed to die. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it hasn't happened so far. And you are happy doing this? I was. My future is going to change. I cannot stay with Oscar forever. I would like to learn more, to see more of the world, but I could not. I could never fight. You might be surprised at what you could do if you had a need enough. Blah. <laughs> but you wish for me to teach you sewing? I am also supposed to arrange my princess hair and wardrobe. I could benefit from your expertise. Alright. Aww. She has such a tiny smile. I want to see her with a bigger smile. She's frowning! Stop making her frown. Make her smile. Slight smile. Oh, that's a better face. That's a bigger smile. She's like a... Oh, she's adorable. Coilette is so much more adorable than Dolores. Dolores is awful. Also, I don't know if... The, I don't know if the microphone picked up that noise. I hope it did not. The heroine. It is late in the evening when Gaston returns, a spring in his step and a sparkle in his eye. His sparkles seem to focus mostly around his hair and one tooth. My beloved calls up for aid, it is wonderful news. He grabs Coilette's hands and pulls her close. Monsieur, no! <laughs> My enthusiasm, what was he going to do to her? I bring good tidings. He reaches into his jacket and pulls out a folded piece of paper. A secret communication from the Princess Cassidy. I open it and read. They're keeping her in Oscar's rooms? Ooh la la, oh my. <laughs> Did you have a chance to speak to Oscar? Ah, we exchange nods. It is enough. Of course, men can communicate with each other simply by bobbing their heads. 
I suppose counting that Gaston to pay much attention to another man is an unlikely process. I don't know. Like, the live-action Disney movie kind of made Gaston a little bit gayer. Or at least his companion was gay. Le Fuel? Le Fuel? What was his companion's name? I don't know. It wouldn't do to run into her guards now after waiting so carefully. Get to Oscar's room and talk to the Princess Cassidy. Good luck. Yes, you climb around the castle like a monkey. There she is! Madeline! Your Highness, I am at your disposal. But perhaps we should speak more quietly? It's alright. Even if I screamed for them to let me out, I doubt they'd listen. Thank you for coming! Thank you for everything. I'm so sorry about the way you've been treated so far. <laughs> she says that with a smile. I'm sorry you had to go in the dungeons because of me. Will I get to sleep in luxury? And I'm not sure that things are going to get any better. What do you mean? Uh, what have you learned so far? Not much, except that instead of punishing Dolores, they promoted her. Yeah, I saw her with Callum. He was not pleased, but he almost seems to expect cruelty from our parents by now. Knowing what I do of the way they have treated him, I thought they loved me. I always felt so safe, so protected and happy. You were never curious about your other siblings and, like, wanted to hang out with them? I had all the beautiful dresses and toys and jewelry I could want, and everyone was kind to me, and yet Callum... They still care about Callum enough to want to protect his reputation, at least. I mean, that's just weird that she wouldn't desire to, like, hang out with her brother. I freaking had a half-sibling, and I made a point to, like, hang out with him when I could. We, we, we are 12 years apart. So that's a huge age gap. We are two different generations. Putting him together with Dolores is cruel to go. Why do I enjoy doing this voice so much? They despise each other. No, neither of them could sleep easily with the other nearby. They could solve this problem by sleeping with each other. Okay, they can't sleep with each other because I know who Dolores is and that would be disgusting. Perhaps they're supposed to be watching the other. Callum wouldn't trust Dolores far enough to take his eyes off her, and if she is someone's agent, she would be spying on him as well. What would be the point? So many lies, so many hidden purposes. Tagline of this game, visual novel game, whatever. I still don't understand Dolores. Stop, please. I, I don't care about Dolores. I'm sorry, I thought you were trying to figure out your parents' motives. I'm afraid that I know their motives, some of them, but if it's true, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think I like doing that voice because it helps kind of clear my throat a little. It feels good on my vocal cords. I, I took your advice. I don't understand. There, look. She gestures at a stack of books piled by a couch. <gasps> She got a bunch of porn. She's been reading porn, all the porn that she can. She's been reading the Mary at Myrad Myriad The Myriad Ways by Sylvia de Gosser. Possibly the world's most famous collection of erotic engravings. <gasps> you were looking at porn. Oh. I saw you when you were dressing in my gown. I don't look like you. And I had to find out. I asked the guards to bring me these porn, and I saw, I saw the bodies of women and men without their clothes. I don't look like them, any of them, not the men and not the women. Yep, Princess Cassidy is actually a man. Callum was correct. Although, I don't think I went over that. I think I just skipped, like, the real meat of the plot just so I could get to Gaston. But basically, Princess Cassidy's parents have kind of been, uh, forcing her- forcing him to become a girl. But he grew up thinking he was a girl the entire time. And, uh, magic doesn't exist in this world, so I think they use, like, herbs and stuff to try to slow down any kind of, like, male hormonal growth. Uh, my 
body. What am I? Who am I? Am I Cassidy? Am I Caspian? If Callum was right, they've kept us apart. They've lied to us both. My whole life, also, I would never realize. Although, I don't get their... Uh, the king and queen's plan because like whoever she married would figure out pretty quickly she wouldn't be able to have kids. If everything I've ever believed about myself is wrong, if I am Caspian, what do I do? Am I supposed to become a prince to fight and drink and boast to win a bride? Who can I be now? If she is Caspian, yeah. What happened to the real princess? What does your heart tell you? Who do you think that you are? Who do you want to be? Do you feel in your heart that Callum was right? Does Caspian feel like your true self? Or do you feel that Cassidy is who you really are? I, I don't know what to think. I've always been myself without thinking about what myself means. And the self I've always been is Cassidy. I don't want to be someone else. But that was before I saw... That you were different from other girls, I know. But everyone is different. There is no one way to be a woman. Well, good, good for you, Madeline, for being a better person. Because she kind of acted terrible to Coilette when she found out Coilette was gay. Ah. We are not all the same. That may be true, but if I was born Caspian, doesn't that make a difference? Eh, you aren't Caspian anymore. <laughs> you may never have been Caspian. You may have been born a little different. Sometimes people are. There is a scullion in Ocean Noir, scullion, skull, with six fingers on one hand. <gasps> it's Queen Anne Boleyn. However, you came to be here, the person that you are now is Cassidy. Well, this has gone on for 22 minutes. I can go on for a little, try to hit 25 maybe. Then is it alright for me to be me? Yes. Aw, what a nice little topic of uh, accepting who you are. I think I needed to hear that. Still, if it were discovered that there is something unusual about me, there would be trouble, wouldn't there? That's why my parents have tried so hard to hide it. Yep. Oh. An heir of the flesh, that's a weird sentence. I suspect your parents are hoping to have you safely married off before anyone can find out. If you don't mind, I need a- Also, isn't this supposed to be Oscar's room? Where is Oscar? He takes some porn and is like jacking it in the corner somewhere? Of course. It is very sensible for her to suggest. Da da da. But what about uh, Gaston? Will he be able to accept Cassidy? And I'm afraid that I have another confession. Ooh? I had a great deal of time to myself here earlier today, with little to do but read and think. I was curious, so I amused myself by looking at a few of your belongings. <laughs> I rifled through your shit while you weren't here. Oh. He's in love with you, isn't he? Uh, he only thinks he is. Innocent infatuation. Other than his sisters, I am the only woman he's ever known. From what I've read, you may not be giving him enough credit. Do you love him? He is my very good friend, but that's all. I'm certainly not romantically involved with him. Men and women can just freaking be friends without any weird complications. Not every childhood friend is going to fall in love with you and marry you. I know little of love. Actually, no, she doesn't love her family either. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, don't worry yourself, they're not terrible people. I was never endangered or abandoned, at least. Like I said, the same for my parents. Okay, uh, let's end this here then.